So well, hi there, this is my video about slope detection. What is slope detection? Well, I'll show it to you. This is one typical 555 uh, long wave transmitter. You will find dozens of videos about 555 transmitter on YouTube. And I'm going to show you that it works. I have the transmitter set on 200 kilohertz. Here is my long wave radio. This is my, these are my additional uh, transistors. Don't mind them now. And this is my antenna. This is the explanation video how simple walkie talkie. Test transmission. One, two, test transmission. So as you can hear, it's working perfectly fine. This is the time I see modulated on pin five on 200 kilohertz, which can be picked up by this long wave radio. But now I have a closer look at it. I have just randomly adjusted the frequency so I can hear my broadcast. Now I'm going to adjust the frequency exactly to 200 kilocycles. The test transmission for the homemade walkie-talkie circuit. You can hear the test transmission over the homemade walkie-talkie circuit. From Oops. The test, transmitter. test transmission, one, two. It got very silent, it got distorted, it got very bad. Well, why? Modulating the timeout chip on pin 5 generates a mix between pulse width modulation and frequency modulation. And a little bit amplitude modulation. I get into that in a couple of seconds. First of all, what do we have? We have frequency modulation, which are the two days radio stations. You can hear them in your car radio or your cheap bath radio or kitchen radio. FM is the band you are using today. And there's still a couple of stations left on AM, long wave, short wave. And this is modulation. This is not a band, this is modulation. You can also use modulation on, uh, you can also use FM on long wave or even on less frequency than long wave. I have had that there are some uh, like telephone devices. You can put one in your room and you can put one in another room and then you can push a button and it's transmitting over the main, over the main line. Uh, and you can hear it on the other station. And these were, I think on 135 kilohertz and they were using FM. So. FM is not aligned to a specific frequency, it's a modulation type. But usually on 78.5 or 88 to 108, you have FM. And on medium wave, long wave, short wave, you usually have AF, you have AM from your broadcast stations. FM means frequency modulation. And on a frequency modulated signal, the length of the signal is changed. So if, for example, it's pushed together very close and then it's pulled out, it's pulled out very long. We are changing the frequency, and if you have a look at it, the height is not changed. On amplitude modulation, the height is changed. The frequency stays the same. I try to draw that in. You can see that the, di the distance from the beginning of one sine wave to the end of one sine wave is round about the same. But as you can clearly see, the height is changed. Here the height is round about the same, and here the height is changed. That's the difference between FM and AM. The radio receives AM on long wave. And we are transmitting an FM, so we are, the radio is waiting for a signal which height is changed. And it's getting a signal where only the length is changed, whereabout the radio doesn't care. And that's why it's not reproducing the audio properly. As you can hear, there's still some little audio left, some distorted audio. That's because there's also a little bit AM in that FM signal, but it's definitely not the signal the radio is wanting to get. Here is the input circuit from the radio. Here is the RF from the antenna and of course ground. Here is the tank circuit. And what I've done now, the transmitter is on 200 kilohertz and as you can see I've tuned the radio to 200 kilohertz and now the audio quality is very bad. Before you could hear that it's working and that's why I was using a slope detection. For example, my transmitter's frequency is 200 kilohertz and I can align the radio now to 197 or 203 kilohertz. This, that, this is just an example. Uh, depends on how, how small the filter of the radio is. But anyway, what I, want to show, what I want to tell you is I am aligning the radio not on the frequency from the transmitter. I'm aligning it only close to the frequency from the transmitter. And what then happens is there is this filter in the radio. Now it's aligned to 203 kilocycles. Okay? And uh, then there's the modulation signal from the transmitter. And since we have frequency modulation, as you can see, the frequency gets changed. And when it's on 197 kilocycles, it's a long way. I can see there's a long time period. And if it's on 203 kilocycles, there is a short time period. Our filter is aligned to 203 kilocycles, for example. And now we are transmitting on 197. So there's only a little amount of RF from our transmitter over the tank circuit going into the radio. 
Now we are getting closer and closer and closer to 203 kilocycles. And as, as much we are getting closer to 203 kilocycles, the more RF power is going into our radio. So we have a varying, varying field strength of the signal there. And if you have a look, if you have a look at AM, you will see that we have a varying field strength since if the waves are bigger, the power is higher. Here the power is always the same. And here the power of this uh, of the signal is changing. If you now have a look on the cheap drawing that I made, and of course I made errors so I had to redraw it, this is how it would look on the filter. We start with 197 kHz, oh, a very weak signal. 198 kHz, oh, it's getting better. 199 kHz, oh, it's getting more better, and so far and so on, until we are on 203 kHz, where, for example, our radio is aligned, when we can hear the station very clear. Now, since we are having frequency modulation and it's not staying on a constant frequency, the frequency is dropping again, and it's, it's 109. It's going down 200. 2, 201, 200, 199. I just haven't drawn it in because it, it requires too much space. So now the frequency is going down again, 199, 198. And as you can see, the signal on the radius uh, tank circuit, the signal on the radius tank circuit is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And hey, what do you see here? If you compare this wave, that will be uh, can be measured on the tank circuit from the radio. If you compare this wave with this wave, Hey, we got amplitude modulation. And this is why our radio can pick up a, an AM signal, a, an F, a FM signal, although it's an AM radio. There are, of course, disadvantages. Depending how good and how, how narrow the filters of the radio are, you will get hissing, you will get bad audio quality. And another thing is, if you take the radio and go away from the transmitter, the best reception always, of course, is on the exact frequency. Spot on frequency, you have the best reception. And if, if you have to underline the radio to get a good, good signal, it will cost you range. What is the best solution? Turn on the radio. Test transmission one, two. Homemade walkie talkie. This is the explanation. You go ahead and do not modulate the, ti the timer chip on pin 5. That's not the way you are doing it. You add a small transistor stage on the output. As you, as you saw, I have aligned it on the ground wave. I have aligned it on the ground wave. I have not realigned the radio. Now I'm going to connect my MP3 player there. This is the explanation video how simple walkie talkie. I have to decrease the volume a little bit from the radio. Test transmission one two. Test transmission one two. This is the test transmission for the homemade walkie talkie circuit. And there we go. So we are not modulating the timer chip on pin five. It does work, but it's not really nice. You add two transistors instead. Uh, and then you can go ahead and have a proper amplitude modulated signal. So in the first version with pin 5 you get this on the output. Of course you get a square wave signal, but this is just an example. And on the second version with the additional transistors you get this. And this is what your AM radio wants to see. Okay, I hope that was clear for everyone. That was my attempt to explain you slope detection. Slope detection also is used in these uh, one transistor radios that you will find. One transistor radio, uh, super regenerative receiver, you can hear FM stations with it using slope detection. But it's uh, on FM I have made the experience uh, on wideband FM because there's also a difference in the modulation type itself. It's, it's, there is narrow band FM and there is wideband FM uh, that, de that defines how much this, um, this uh, wave is pulled outside, uh, from inside to outside and how much it's pushed. For example, uh, on CB radio, you have a narrow FM, NFM. On the FM radio band, you have wideband FM. And there are even other additional modes. For example, if you, your AM is pretty equal. You have, uh, if you want to call it like that, narrow AM on long wave, medium wave, short wave. But if you want to call it like that, you would have super wideband AM on a TV carrier signal, because a TV carrier signal, depends on the standard, is modulated in its amplitude. And it's not fit, uh, fitting into one of these radio bands, it's very, it's a very wide banded signal. And it would be ultra wide AM. And on FM, there are these 2.4 gigahertz video transmitters, they are making an FM signal, a FM signal, uh, and they are using very or ultra wide FM. So it depends on the uh, on how much the, uh, the waveform here is changed, uh, if it's narrowband FM, wideband FM, or whatever. <laughs>
yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic there. Uh, it looks like I have to make two videos. I wanted to get German and English into one video, but it looks like I have to make two videos. So I hope you got what I wanted to show you. And these wireless aren't fixed. You don't have to align it exactly on 203 kilocycles if you transmit on 200 kilocycles. Nah, that's just an example. Just experiment. I, I just wanted to explain it to you. I hope you understood how slope detection works and how these circuits work and why I can pick up FM uh, with an AM radio. Okay, uh, best regards, Stefan.